What's up guys, I'm Random Frank P. Today we're gonna review the 2017 Razer Blade Gaming Laptop. This thing is nothing short of a beast and inside is an i7 7700HQ CPU at 2.8 gigahertz, 16 gigs of RAM and a GTX 1060 graphics card. And gaming with this is awesome. You can take it on the go easily since it's so small. And honestly, this laptop is replacing my MacBook Pro. I've used a MacBook since 2011. And since I started using this, I've instantly fell in love with it. It's got an awesome keyboard and for the price, it is a killer option in the laptop market right now. So let's check it out. First, the blade is very slim. There's no doubt that when it comes to portability, the Razer Blade is one of the best when it comes to gaming on the go. In fact, at just four pounds, it is significantly lighter than most gaming laptops out there and it's only 0.7 inches thick. For connectivity, we have an HDMI out, USB 3.0, Thunderbolt 3, and a Kensington lock up top on the right side of the blade, and the left side features your power, two additional USB 3s, and a headphone jack. And speaking of power, the 165 watt power brick is very small and compact. It's literally smaller than most cell phone battery banks out there, which is crazy. This thing is just really tiny. And also back to the Thunderbolt 3 real quick, you can use that to plug in things like extra monitors, even uh, extra power source, or plug in the Razer Core to have an external graphics card if needed. Now the blade is also very solid for being lightweight. Made from a CNC aluminum here, the matte finish on top is nice, but it does attract some fingerprints and oil, so I definitely pick up a skin from D brand to set it apart and give it a nice look. Carbon fiber is looking mighty fine on this. Also on top, you have that Razer logo, and that glows green when powered on. Just a little nice extra touch for some visual flair. Moving on, let's talk more about the construction because the hinge here is just buttery smooth. The screen glides nicely along at about a 135 degree angle for nice viewing. It's just extremely firm. The screen doesn't flex or anything. It's definitely not flimsy by any means. Real top notch stuff. And you also have a webcam and a built in mic right where you'd expect it to be. Top bezel. And next up, the power on your blade is a very satisfying power button in the middle. It might sound petty or whatever, but that power button, it's tactile and you know you're powering up a beast. For audio, we have two stereo speakers on each side of the keyboard and the unit gets decently loud. It's one of the better sounding laptops I've heard. And don't worry, I'll get to the keyboard in a minute. Let's go to the trackpad. It does feel nice. My fingers glide smoothly along it. I'm just not a fan of the left and right clicks there on the bottom. Personally, I think they're too slim, and I found myself just wanting to click more on the trackpad itself like I did on my MacBook. And those two buttons are one of my very few complaints about the blade. The screen here is a beauty. It's 14 inches at full HD, so a 1080p display. And honestly, I'm okay with that. They do have a 4K upgrade available for some extra bucks, but at 1080p, there's no real complaints for me. The colors on the screen are nice. The screen gets bright at 350 nits. And from where I'm sitting, the pixel density is fantastic. The 14 inch size here definitely contributes to that. And it'll most likely be fine for you as well, unless you have your eyes like one inch away from the screen. And the thing is, since it is only 1080p, it means games are gonna be easier to push. So you can mostly max out a lot of titles with that GTX 1060 inside and get frame rates above 60 constantly. And the matte screen is great for cutting down on harsh light reflections, which is always a plus on a gaming laptop. That's why you're buying this, right? For gaming. Let me just say, I didn't start playing Overwatch until I got this laptop and I've been instantly hooked ever since. Maxed out at Epic, I was getting frames above 100 FPS, mostly above 115 even, and that GTX 1060 was putting in some work. Cutting the graphics settings down to high even still had me getting around 150 frames, which is crazy. A new game like Battlegrounds, for example, again, maxed out, I was getting over 60 FPS, and that's pretty impressive because the game is unoptimized, it's still in early access, and there's a lot of things going on at some point in that game. Impressive is definitely the word when it comes to this. For a popular benchmarking title like Tomb Raider, we got 93 FPS on ultimate settings and 174 on high. Games like GTA 5, Battlefield 1 were all upwards of 80 FPS, and for a performance benchmark, we got a 94-97 in Fire Strike. So honestly, with this 1060 inside, there aren't much games you can't run at 60 FPS. I mean, if anything, just bump your graphical settings down in most games from like ultra or high to a medium, and you will definitely be getting a smooth 60 FPS across. And before we wrap up, let's check out the keyboard on this laptop, which is definitely one of my favorite features. So obviously Razer knows what they're doing when it comes to this area of production, and they nailed it here. 
The keyboard is phenomenal and features their 16.8 million chroma RGB lighting effects for some extra wow factor. The keyboard on the blade has very minimal travel and it feels pleasant to type on, featuring those chiclet style keys with butterfly switches. In the middle, we have the little rubber dome there with the LED light above. And I was instantly used to it because it's the same type of keyboard that I've used on my MacBook Pro over the years. But let's dive into the effects. And odds are, if you've ever owned a Razer keyboard in the past, or you've ever watched one of my videos, you know what's coming. Once you connect to your Razer Synapse account, you'll get access to all the lighting effects. You can do things like have the lights breathe in and out, a cool fire effect that shows a red, yellow, and orange blazing effect, cool things like tight pulse lighting, where it leaves a trail of all your key presses, be cautious of your passwords, a pulse type where it sends a pulse wave outward from the key, spectrum cycling where it just shifts from color to color throughout the entire spectrum, the ever so popular rainbow wave that you've probably seen a million times before if I had to take a wild guess, and a starlight effect that twinkles certain keys in and out down your keyboard. Also in the lighting tab, you can go in and make your own lighting effects by layering certain ones on top of each other. And since each key is individually backlit, you can make some pretty cool looking effects. Now also, some games have their own lighting profiles. For example, when I'm playing Overwatch, the keyboard becomes interactive. What it does is highlight the keys that my hero can use during the game, and when I get my alt, it sends a cool flash wave across the keyboard to let me know. There are a few supported games like this, and even user-made downloadable ones. Now, since the keyboard lights are obviously gonna drain some of the battery, um, when it's not plugged in, there is a setting where you can kind of change the brightness for when it is powered to a power source or not. And doing things, you know, like changing the brightness to 50% or having the keyboard be a static green or red color, that'll also help save some battery. And for my time testing this, 99% of the time, I did have it connected to the wall adapter here. But for gaming, on average, I got around two hours, I'd say maybe a little bit less for gaming. Now again, all things you know, like having the screen brightness of the keyboard settings down is all gonna give you some extra juice in the end, but I found, like I said, on average, two hours was about what I'd expected when gaming not plugged in. So, so far, I've only had one con, which was the trackpad buttons. And I'll talk about one other thing that might be an issue. When gaming, this thing does get ramped up, so the fans are blazing, that 7700 and GTX 1060 are balls to the wall, and it gets warm. As you can see here with the heatsink and the two fans underneath pushing air outwards towards the back, it does a good job, but some of the keyboard is a hot spot. It's not like burning my fingers or anything, but it is noticeable, and like I said, the fans definitely get ramped up, so you might want to take some headphones or something when gaming so you don't have to hear them. Now taking apart the bottom panel real quick to give you a better look at what's inside, you can see those two fans I spoke of taking in the cool air from the sides and exhausting it out the back hinge. You have your 16 gigs of RAM soldered on here, not removable by the way, the CPU next to that, and the PCIe SSD off to the left. It's really amazing how they managed to fit such a powerful machine into something this slim and compact. And this does come in at a little bit over $2,000 for this model, but again, given the competition, the form factor, and the hardware, it is tough to complain really. I mean, go price a new Touch Bar MacBook Pro and then tell me your thoughts. So for a quick recap, again, the form factor is amazing, nice, slim, and portable, very lightweight. I love the screen, the keyboard is nice, it's all good. My only two complaints, like I mentioned, were the trackpad buttons, which if using a mouse shouldn't really be an issue as it is, and it does get warm and considerably loud when you are pushing this thing to its max. But I mean, other than that, for $2,000, given the competition, this is definitely one of the best gaming laptops out there. It is very powerful, and it is why I'm completely switching. I fell in love with it, and it is my go-to laptop from here on out for the channel. The 2017 Razer Blade, definitely recommended. If you want to check it out, I'll put a link to it in the description down below. And maybe if you add this to your wish list on Nice, we can get a giveaway or something going soon. So I'll put the link for that as well in the description. If you like this video, definitely give it a big thumbs up to show your support. Feel free to follow me on Twitter at randomfrankp. And last, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. I'm Random Frank P. Hope you enjoyed. Have a good day.